You bum ass. Pardon? You're a bum ass. I'm a bum ass, yes. <laughs> yes, you, I'm a bum ass. You work too much. Uh, well, that never has changed in so many years. I'm not sure how to fix it. Okay. Yeah, Dave, this room has candy. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. Rudiger made a claim later that they were earlier. There were places in Germany where people actually laugh all the time. And I told really? him, I just I want to go and see this. Folks, what some people have experienced is sitting in the back half of the room. You, you, uh, you, you miss the speakers. And now this room in the back, you may not hear as well. Just so you know, you may sit in the back and slip in and out. I won't feel bad if you're in the front and you slip in and out. It doesn't matter, but just. But if you snore, yeah, we'll both throw something at you. We don't have <laughs> to sleep, just if you snore, we'll both throw something yeah. But just so you know, if you're sitting back there, the sound is really bad in this room. It, it somehow gets here and you, you can't hear. So, and if you have to go in the middle, I won't mind at all. Just so you know. Okay, would anyone like to volunteer to work on the even path? This will improve your return on minutes, but I hope the report I see the massive number of volunteers. Yeah, I see that. It's too, like but, you know, <laughs> be nice to the volunteers, they run away. <laughs> okay. I will repeat this comment one more time because I've sat in this room three times. If you sit back of this sort of post, the sound may be bad. If you're worried about being insulting, if you walk in and out, I won't be insulted at all. I'm just trying to be friendly about what you can hear. You'll probably hear have me announce this one more, but I got stuck in the back corner and couldn't hear on one of the meetings I was in. Maybe next time say the mic. So oh, okay, the mic. Yeah, so that people Okay. Can everybody hear me? How about the back? I had one of the mumblers at the mic then. Is everything working okay in the back? Good. Okay, they fixed it. Good news. Are we at 350 or are we at 4? 350. This is a kind of small crowd though. I think that each of you needs to go out and find four other people to bring in. That's okay. Are you ready to go? We'll go with we'll go with the tape then. Okay, we're going to start start as we're the we're the meeting that's between you and uh, beer and dinner. So I'm going to go through the agenda and then Al and the chair slides unless you wanted to do it. I can do them both. Okay. So it's Alex, you're up. Has anyone seen Mark so far? Okay. He may not make it. He had another meeting. Am I too loud now? Okay. So the agenda, they've written the note well again. Please read it. Enjoy it. Love it. How many people have never seen a note well? OK, well then, please read it. They're online. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bash the agenda, and we'll go through the chair, chair status. Being as it's late, we may run a little later into the uh, chair status time, but uh, we have a, a fairly short set of model reviews. The data models we're going to go through, the topology drafts went to the ISG and came back because the revised data store issues had not been finished now that NetMod has kindly finished stuff and, and given us good advice and the Tertiz group has worked. Alex will give a brief update. 
Uh, Mark went through his uh, data model and info model to see if they were biased data stores. We haven't had it checked on Yang models, but if he's not here, I will give a brief check. Then we will go through some new models, fabric data center and CU separation models. And then most of this session was to see if we had interest in a design team for ephemeral data store. I will go through a description of that and then I will call for volunteers. Then at that point we will break out into working on a design team because I figured most people, uh, the, the ephemeral data store is probably just so simple we might be able to finish it at this time um, or we might be able to get a good long way. Then our next session was set aside for a data store to get a room, but they gave us a large room, so I'll try, if I get a data center team. Now, I'll go right into the, the, the chair slides on that, because what's important, just a minute, I've lost the chair slides. There. I got it. Okay, I might as well just go right into the chair slides. Um, what we're doing is we're at the end of our two major models. Our major models are our network model and our Yang topology model. We think that this is all done. I think the uh, rib data model has to the 25th to make a comment, but these are about ready to go once we've checked with the Yang doctors and Obster and uh, Routinger for their QAs, and these will go carefully. We will, I will be asking, at least at my input from the T's working group and people, for an early RFC publication if the ISG approves of the topology so the T's work can go through and several others. The RIP model will probably go through at normal speed, but there are implementations of large size coming. Um, remember, these models can go into configuration or dynamic data store. They are simply models. They are designed to be ready for dynamic data store and have been implemented in it. I think I've said everything on this slide. This little thing is congratulations to the working group for uh, having uh, gotten through the big major models we were chartered through. I know that we've had a lot of, uh, and congratulations to the NetMod and NetComp for all their help. Okay. Now the AD's request is to adjust the milestones and plans. We can, if I have a design team that works on ephemeral state and um, uh, work that might fit in with it, then we will keep going. If not, we may go uh, and wait for some of the implementation reports or go into a short hiatus. There's lots of, uh, stuff, but I need to make sure that as we plug in additional models, we have a data store to plug in. Uh, what's, uh, and there is a template for this, thanks again to the, to the authors of the revised data store, Kent being one and several others, um, that there's a template. So, you know, I'm going to go through as the last step the template and the issues. If we have a, a short design team, this, because of all the good work, may be a short form or we may have to argue with some of the things. So looking for that design team, if you're looking for a quick term, that's what we're doing. Um, our choices in our list are, again, work on the ephemeral state, work on the new models for specific deployments, and wait for or wait for more implementations. At the end of all the models, I will show the uh, network uh, data store model Actually, at the end of all the models, I'll take a pause and ask for people if they have any opinion. Then we'll go into the revised data store model and for those people who want to work on it. If there's no one that want to work on it, that will take us into the go on hiatus uh, while we finish everything. Questions? This is really a time uh, of choice. If the working group says, okay, we've done everything and the uh, information in the uh, revised data stores is enough for corporations to develop their own. That's great. We've done a good job at setting everything up and doing the pub sub and getting the push and getting these basic models. I'm sure this stuff will come back as we get other use cases. And in fact, some of the boffs have suggested that might be good. 
Ken. Yeah. Uh, Kent Watson, Juniper Networks. Not so much a question, but as a comment, uh, I'm still the assigned doc gang doctor for the topology um, draft, and I'll be take, looking into it uh, shortly after the conference. So, thank good. You. Thank you, um, Aliyah. I went through the chair slides already. My apologies. Now we're going to Alex. It's your turn. Yeah, he's going to do it next week. Hmm? Well, okay, so hi everybody. I just have a very brief update regarding the uh, regarding the topology. So there are two drafts. One is a basic topology model. The second is the layer three topology model. Um, next slide, please. So basically, there have been a few uh, updates. Um, and so the topology model went from the zero from the 12 to the 14 and the layer 3 topology model from the 8 to, to the to the 10 draft um, the main update most whoops sorry I think I should this this uh, probably the, the most uh, important update is that uh, we changed and updated the model to to MDM to NMDA compliance um, this was also in particularly to address the mixed discovered underlays and configured overlays issue that we had that we've struggled with for such a long time and this was basically the, 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 the cleanest resolution so basically I'm glad actually that that worked out um, uh, this basic the structure of the model actually has remained the same actually the changes were actually very minimal basically the only change other than the description and the textual updates was that the server provided leaf is, is, is yeah is gone um, then, in, in, uh, then in addition, um, there was actually there was in the in the latest revision we did add also a state model for non NMDA compliant implementation. That was a comment uh, that was made uh, I think by, by Rob Wilton. Uh, I think brought, brought it up that it would be a good idea to add that. So we have this actually in that uh, in there as well. We move. Um, <laughs> Um, because this is basically just for the non-MDA compliant implementations. Um, and yeah, so the updated modules, models uh, have been reviewed, <laughs> but of course we'll be happy to, <laughs> to get your review, um, Kent. And uh, also I wanted to mention also that the security uh, considerations have also been updated and, and, uh, and, and reviewed. Basically it does explain basically the fact that we rely on the underlying transport and NACM to provide security. In addition, basically we have added basically explanation of various exploits that you could do if you were to mess configuration if you did not have that access. Okay, next one. And so, Basically, the next steps are well, essentially the network topology draft is done, we hope. <laughs> um, the layer 3 topology draft is practically done. It does require actually one more revision with very minor updates. There was also another young doctor, I think uh, Christian Hobbs, uh, raised actually the issue that we have in the example model, which is not, not actually part of the model per se, but in the example, we have basically we, we show how to apply to, to ISIS, and basically uh, we were advised that, uh, well, uh, and also there was basically actually one issue that basically one prefix needs to be updated to point to, to, to the correct state model. Those things are minimal, and we hope to uh, post them in the coming few days, also by the end of the week. Okay, that's all. Thank you. So again, this is past its working group last call. But at any point, if you're if you're implementing or deploying it, uh, please send comments. It will go to ITF last call fairly quickly after the Yang doctors go. So thank you again to all who've worked on it. Okay, now we're on to the RIP model. And Mark, do you want to uh, give that one just a minute? Okay, this is a very brief update to this uh, I2RS RIP information model and uh, RIP model. And uh, this two draft has already been there for a long time and quite stable. Uh, they also believe. And uh, these two drafts are uh, aligned um, with each other. And uh, there's no additional changes since two years before. Okay, and uh, um, the information model has already passed the working group last call, and the data model has already, uh, last call has already started, and we also very appreciate their 
comments and suggestions to that model and also uh, have a good, um, do a very quick uh, check on the draft, on the data model draft. Uh, it's, I think, I, I personally think that draft is, uh, uh, is, cap is capable with, uh, with the MD, uh, MDA style. So I mean, that's all for the draft. And again, we look for our gang. Our gang doctor has responded. Um, it's Giles, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so he's starting to interact with Mock. So yeah. we are again thankful for that. Okay. Any questions about this? Again, it's the same comment. This is going to go rapidly through the process. If you have looked at it or played with it, or have anything to say, please make comments. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for all your hard work, and big thank you to Mitten out there in the blue internet space that we can, uh, he's done, been so faithful to keep going with this all these years. Okay, now we're going to go um, through the new models. Uh, these have not been adopted or called to. Uh, we're going to talk about them, fabric-based Hello everyone. Uh, now here come to the two uh, models focusing on the fabric-based management for data center network. Uh, the first one is about the network topology and another is the service model. Um, as these two models have been presented for several times, um, so I may give a brief introduce, uh, introduction about these two models. Next slide, please. Um, the objectives. The service model is defined to represent the services for the users uh, in order to deploy the service, uh, while regardless of the details of the network, such as the topology technology and many others. While the um, fabric-based topology model is used to define um, a fabric topology module to manage the um, data central network, in architecture, we give the usage of these two models. The fabric service model is used by the orchestrator to communicate with the topology manager in order to deploy a service, while the fabric topology model is used by the topology manager in order to manage the network. Next slide, please. Uh, here is the history of these two models. Um, the fabric topology model is firstly proposed uh, in ITF-96 in Berlin, um, while in ITF-97, we updated the fabric topology model due to the comments. Um, and besides, we also proposed the fabric service model uh, as the service interface to users to configure or manage the user network fabric topology. Um, besides that, in the fabric service model, we also define an architecture. Uh, in architecture, we explain how these two models um, to cooperate together in order to provide a service. Um, besides that, we also add new authors in order to participate in the work. Uh, while last ITF uh, in Chicago, we resolved the comments on comparing the fabric model with the uh, TE topology model. After discussion with the TE topology authors, uh, we both make um, the consensus on the difference between these two models. Um, besides that, we add some descriptions and revise the models based on the comments. Next slide, please. And after the ITF-98, we also make some updates, updates on these two models. Firstly, um, due to the recommendation by the area directors, we also um, update the models to network management database architecture style. And also in the appendix, we provided a non-MDA fabric topology state module. Um, besides that, as people show more interest in fabric modules, so we remove the content um, of the fabric capable device module, as this module is independent with our two, um, two modules, the fabric, fabric topology module and the service module. Um, besides that, we we'll also make some editorial changes. Um, next slide, please. 
And after this update, we think that um, now these two drafts are ready for the work group adoption. So we may ask um, what the chairs recommend about the adoption. And also we are appreciate for the further review of these two uh, model drafts. And, and thank you for that question. We'll pick it up after the next model as okay. part of our general discussion. Okay. We do appreciate all your hard work to refine the model. Uh, thank thank you. you very much. Um, and next is the question. Any questions? Good, we'll go on to the next model. Thank okay. you again. We will pick up some general questions I introduced at the beginning of the session uh, after this next model and before we go into the discussion on ephemeral data store. Thank you again. Okay, next model. Michael, it's your turn, yes. Just, I'll be flipping your slides for you today, so just. Okay. Hi, working group. This is Michael from Huawei, and uh, today I want to introduce the update for information module of a CU separate data network. Okay. Uh, this is a slide that is brief introduce the background, motivation, and objective of our works. The background is uh, uh, still separated the BNJ network use case and the architectures already be accessed by uh, BBF's uh, Cloud CEO working group and the relative uh, document will uh, enter the uh, strawberry steps and uh, maybe will be published in this years. And uh, so why we need to use this still separated uh, BNJ network is because it can get, uh, it can bring ban uh, many benefits for example, if we have the centralized control plane, that the control plane can have the uh, whole view of the network resource and uh, the user's information. So this control plane can distribute the network resource as a specific service requirement. Uh, for example, the, uh, the control plane can balance distribute the IP and the uh, and, uh, session to the user plane. Uh, that can improve the utilization of network resource. And uh, another benefit is if we have the centralized uh, control plane, that it can provide a unified interface to out uh, outside uh, systems such as uh, as uh, EMS, uh, DHCP server and uh, raters. Uh, this can simplify the management. Also, this work can significantly uh, reduce the time to market because the, uh, the control plane and the user plane be separated and the device of them can be extended separated. So it can significantly reduce the uh, uh, time to market. The so, uh, last uh, things we can get benefit is because some BNG network uh, and anytime maybe have a large number of user accessing. So if we have a dynamic control plane to handle it, it will improve the efficiency to the network. Okay, uh, so how to achieve this CU separated network? Uh, in this document will provide an information module to present the uh, interaction interface between the control plane and the user plane. This, if this work be standardized, uh, it can help the uh, interaction work between, uh, interwork between different devices. Uh, for example, if the control plane devices is uh, from uh, winter A and uh, the user plane devices are from winter B, C, D, and uh, if we have a standard information module that can help them, them to understand each other and help uh, them understand uh, uh, and recognize what the attribute uh, this, this table carried. Uh, so this information module basically have two blocks. One is introduce the uh, uh, control plane interface, uh, control plane information. Another is can uh, introduce the uh, user plane information. Uh, the control plane, the control plane is take 
charge of uh, generate some interest table rules and then send to the user plan. And the user plan will map into some uh, policy and then perform corresponding action. Another rule of the user plan is to report the traffic statistic to the user plan, uh, to the control plan for uh, and uh, next slide it, we provide a uh, example of this uh, information model okay we can see in this uh, picture there is even maybe uh, a user named Bob he is assessing and then uh, you can see the left figure the user plan will report the uh, Bob's information and uh, the traffic uh, statistic, for example, the available bandwidth to the uh, control plan. Control plan uh, receives this information and uh, then uh, search the uh, Bob's corresponding service requirement, uh, then uh, generate uh, auto generate some, uh, ser uh, some tables, so for example, the user's information table. Uh, told, it can help to the uh, can user plan. Okay, this set of uh, tables is mm, relative to the Bob, and uh, the Bob's source info, uh, IPv4 information, and the Bob's QS requirement. Uh, for example, here is provide example. The uh, CR is six MB per second. Uh, PR is eight MB per second, and then. The user uh, control plan sends this several rules to the user plan. User plan receives these rules and mapping and uh, mapping to corresponding uh, policies. And here is some policy example. Uh, the rules is if Bob is an engineer and the source IP is in the uh, market and subnet, and then it performs corresponding action is okay. Limited uh, Bob's. Uh, bandwidth from the uh, from 6 MB to uh, 10 MB, then the user plan uh, performs this action. Next slide, please. <coughs> okay, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this page uh, provides an update from last night's meeting, and in the 01 version, we are writing the uh, user's information module and user plan's information module uh, characteristic cor uh, correct some more clerical errors and uh, improve the readability. Uh, here is a figure to show the uh, briefly introduce the uh, uh, user plan the uh, behaviors. Uh, the user plan receives the rules and the, uh, mapping to policy, ma mapping policy and then perform corresponding actions. And another uh, thing that we update is we add an uh, appetax section to uh, introduce a data module of the CU separate BNG network. Here we reuse uh, uh, the data module which defined in the RTGWG working group uh, the uh, logical network element and the logical net uh, and the network instance module. And uh, here we can see uh, this is a tree structure. We uh, Use an example. We create an instance of the INE module. We can hear. Uh, we can see here the name. The name we assign a value webras one, and then it can uh, use schema among machinism to assemble different uh, relative works such as uh, interface, VLAN, uh, policy, Q, uh, QS, ACL. Uh, and uh, in this in this meeting, we also want to get some feedback, and the smart part can maybe can told us whether this is a good way or right way to uh, use this module to present the still separated uh, data module. Okay. Uh, next. Okay. Uh, the next step we want to align with the BBF or relative works and maybe requires the BBF or um, chairs and uh, uh, cross seal working group chairs to uh, since liaison to address working group. And we also want to solicit more comments and suggestions. And uh, we can, based on this suggestion or comments, to prepare another version to improve our works. Uh, finally, if everything works well, and uh, uh, the working group think we th this is available works. Uh, maybe we want some time we can uh, want working group coffee option. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. And again, we're going to cover some of these adoptions in our general questions. Okay. So, any questions for Michael? Well, thank you. We will go on to the next step. Again, I'm going to repeat uh, what we started out in the chair slides is our major work item left is to create ephemeral uh, or a, a dynamic data store. That was our initial charter. Of course, with the dynamic data store, we could create one that's not. In our wonderful NetMod revised data store version 3, there is a um, uh, appendix which provides a great deal of the information. Uh, you should see the example uh, ephemeral state uh, that Kent and other, his co-authors provided. And there's a wonderful extension. Now, we can go through and continue to work on that, but we need a design team. So right now, we're going to do what uh, we lovingly call the hum moment. Um, I would like to hear a hum on people who want to work on this revised data stores. Work means be an author, be a reviser. Alternatively, you can pull out your ICF app and swipe right. Yes, swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go. So, uh, the chair would like a hum. Will all those who are willing to work on the ephemeral data store, that means co-author or revise, hum? Okay, that's a, a, a small set of hums. Um, the next question is, uh, is, are people interested in the last two models? We'll go model by model. I'd like a hum on people who are willing to act. The authors have spent quite a bit of time working on their model. Um, how many people? Go ahead, Sorry, Kent. Be, before you get to the hum, uh, Kent Watson, Jennifer Networks, uh, before you get to the hum, um, at least on the last model, I was wondering, is the I2S working group the appropriate working group for that work? Uh, I mean, is it related to ephemeral dynamic data stores? Uh, again, this is a uh, 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 place like R R RTWG where models can come to find a home. Uh, okay. It doesn't have to be ephemeral. Okay. It doesn't have to be uh, dynamic and simply be a platform-wide, not a specific protocol, or a protocol independent. So in that hat, the fabric model fits. So we'll ask that question. And then for Michaels, we have a secondary question. So I will ask the question, uh, because that will help uh, the AD and I, and uh, Russ and Ali and I to direct the authors to their best next step. How many people are interested in working on the fabric I'd ask the room to have a hum if you're interested. Okay, so we do hear some interest. That's a sort of hmm. Well, you're hearing it probably better than I. Okay, for Michael's draft and his wonderful co-authors, that's the one. Michael, did you present in RDWG as well? No. Yes. yes, okay. What was your feedback there? Okay, so one of the questions someone asked about his model, and I, I want to make sure if we ha need discussion, is whether it's specific, is a protocol independent model. Michael makes uh, the proposal that the split between control plane and user plane is interesting and a non-protocol specific model. Other people have suggested that it may be aligned with other things such as the BBF because of his application. Again, the reason why it's here is not necessarily that it's ephemeral or dynamic, although you can see the benefit of that for his model, but because it's protocol independent. So I'm going to ask for a sense of the room. By the way, we will, we will send these to the list as well. But as a sense of the room for the AD and Russ and I, how many people are interested in reviewing this model? I'd ask for a hum. Okay, Ilya, you hear our, our answer. Was that a medium or was that a high for the note taker? Medium, high. That was medium. Okay. That's energized. Good. Okay. So that gives the, that is the chairs because of that 
we'll get together and, and send the authors what we're going to do as far as making a working group call. Unless you want to. Yeah. Please do. So I'm really happy to hear that there's interest in additional work and models. But one of my questions is getting the base pieces done and having the energy and participation and need in terms of implementations, for instance, to do so. And so for that, I mean, I personally feel like there's a lot of value in the RIB models and the topology models. Um, one of the questions is for other pieces of work that uh, the working groups are working on, like the filter-based RIB, um, you know, the interest level in that. I have talked with the chairs about looking at winding down the working group if there's not enough energy and if we're not having folks actually actively volunteering to do things like shepherd and review documents. I know that part of the challenge in this working group has been that a lot of the documents are there. Sorry, I'm being blocked. A lot of the challenge. Let's try this again so you can actually see me and not block by a column. Right. One of the challenges has been that a lot of the documents have been sitting there for a year or two, and we haven't had necessarily all of the pieces, such as the ephemeral, some of the ephemeral data store work, in order to do full implementation, as full or at least standards compliant for what it will be, uh, implementations. And so one of the questions I have is how many people of course, now I can't hear the hum as well either. <laughs> How many people are willing and interested to seriously, you know, work on things like the data store, reviewing documents, and uh, and so on in the next six months? If I can have a hum for that, that would be useful. Okay, so that was a hum for. If you're willing to work and review the revise uh, the ephemeral data store, well, I was actually asking in general for the okay. work, is because I think that what I found interesting is that was actually different and less than the people who are interested in some of the new documents. I'm well, bluntly, I'm extremely concerned about the idea of trying to adopt new documents in the working group if there's not energy in the working group, because there are other places if we need to that we could put them, right? Um, I'd like to see the work that's in the working group get done. We've done a lot of stuff. When we started this working group, we thought, wow, if we could just get data models, I mean, just getting the RIB data model, get some of the stuff done, that would be huge and a big change for the industry. And I think we've seen a lot of that happen already. A lot of the features that we we're looking for to go into NetConf and RESTConf are there. It's awesome. But the question is, you know, at what point do we say, that was great, but now we don't have energy? Or at what point do we say, this was great, and now we're really gung-ho to go focus on this piece? And that's what I need you all to be thinking about. My understanding is the ephemeral data store work, to actually do that, particularly if we have some productive sessions this week, is not that high. But... I really need to have, you know, one of the question I'm facing is do I recharter or do I close I2RS and when do I do it? And that's based on, you know, interest and energy. This is not a I want to, I want to close I2RS. This is a if this is what the status is, that's what it is and I need to know that. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil Schaefer, uh, Juniper Networks. If you're looking for a, for a more accurate thing, you might want to have people stand up because there's a there's a deniability in a hum, you know. But uh, you stand up and actually raise your hand, you know, something. Sure, something that's to fine. Get a more accurate, more more uh, less deniable count. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. So fine. Who in the working? Well, sorry, Don, do you want to go first? Yeah, Dan Bogdanovich. Uh, so the working group from the original architecture document fared far away. And the original intent, what was you know in the in the in the architecture and what is being developed today, are two different things. So from that perspective, me personally, uh, I have I'm I'm coming here to see 
if there is something coming back, but so far from my perspective, you know, from the original intent and what we, it went, the, the, the working group went to, are, uh, you know, ended up in very, you know, uh, differentiated. So if you remember, you were even the author on the document, you and David Ward on the original architecture document. Y yes, I'm very well aware. So. Um, I would argue actually the push notifications, the ability to do dynamic pushes and subscriptions are one of the pieces there. We have an understanding of how to actually do the priorities to handle multi-headed control, and that's there. We have the dynamic data store understood uh, what needs to happen, but not nailed down yet. We have the RIB model, which lets us provide a programmatic interface at the right level. If you're talking about speed issues, sure, that's a concern. If you're talking about all of the, the other pieces in terms of sort of dynamic uh, to the different protocols, so I, I we've had say, challenges. So I, I will go uh, to that. Uh, I have, OK. So I have a experience implementing something which is close to ITRS. Yes. But it is essentially not compliant with the, major, with the majority of the documents. One of the things you know, which I ran into is that there, are some, there were some issues that they had to go different ways and different paths. So uh, some of the things are useful, but you know, majority of the things are a little bit you know, uh, problematic. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it, but I am not you know, uh, 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 doing active contributions. Because you know it's uh, it, the path has diverged. That's all. A point of clarification: um, If we had uh, I, uh, Netmod, um, excuse me, Netconf and Restconf were two initial pieces. As we announced in the last couple of things, people with an alternative, be it binary, be it Cbor or whatever you have, are still open. Are you suggesting something like you'd like to see something like that with an, yet another alternative? Um, not necessarily. It would be nice, but uh, not necessarily because it's it's more about uh, the interactions between the between the applications between the how I see the IRS is useful between the management service control and data plane and uh, some. So, and especially with the breaking up of the uh, data plane and the control plane and the control plane separation, sorry, of the control plane, data plane, the data plane, the service plane, those were uh, interesting part where some of the ITRS concepts can be used and you can use NetConf, FreshConf, or anything third party, it doesn't matter because in this case, like for example, the RIB model is a common thing. Now, which transport you use to uh, to transfer the API between the point A and B, I don't think it's the, the this important. It's more about agreeing on, you know, on the applications. Uh, for example, one of them is we were having that chat today. For example, is I want to do an LSP, and uh, from a usage perspective, is uh, how I want to use the LSP or how I want to use the ACL, and then define that here. How to, how is it how is it being used and what API you know in order how what an API to do in order to communicate that that desire I don't want to I'm purposely I don't want to use the uh, uh, word intent so your desire to that being you know, essentially through the control plane being established and deployed onto the data plane so coming up with those use cases and saying okay here are my you know here's my co common lfip here's my you know common you know rib you know just that would be a very useful and then which protocols you're using it really doesn't matter so what i'm hearing just to reflect that mm -hmm. unless you want to address something else to leah i just want to clarify your comments did did you want to go ahead for something to leah before i ask no no that, that was just a clarifying you know, question then it sounded like the uh, data plane application plane split that Michael was looking at was something of interest to you. Um, when, uh, if, if, if you can mention the draft name, I cannot put. M Michael, would you? No, no, but what was the draft name? Uh, yes, it was separating information. Oh, okay. So I, uh, 
I haven't read that draft, so I, 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 you know, I can't do a full comment on that. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't, but I haven't, uh, okay. haven't read the full draft, so I can't. Thank, thank you very much. That was just a clarifying question. Well, I guess the question is more use cases, but more to the point, as you say, you have an implementation, and what we've been doing here has diverged. Are there other people, I mean, feel free to raise hands or come up to the mic, who are in similar boats? Is it... Are there pieces that are, have been implemented and it just feels like this is not, uh, has not been going down the right path? Okay, so let me pull back. So your contributions are welcome. The intent was not to go down the different path. And if we don't understand what the divergence is, it's hard to improve it. Uh, running code really matters. That said, but let me go back to Phil's point, which is, all right, Raise your hand or stand up if you're willing to work on documents in the last next six months to get different pieces done. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to try it. I mean, if, if I tour us were to continue for a long period of time, then I would be looking at doing things like rechartering to add in some of the pieces that we talked about in some of the NetConf, um, NetMod recharter to clarify the pieces that need to happen. But we've got, you know, an agreement and I'm happy to at least let things run through the next IETF and see how things go. But we really need to actually have energy in motion. I know that some of the models, like the topology stuff, are things that um, certain projects are depending on, and we're not really seeing folks coming and participating and saying, hey, this is what we need. Uh, a lot of energy has been put into the working group by, you know, Sue is one of the chairs, and that's not something that's fair to depend on, and it doesn't represent the group, right? I need you all who raised your hand to be active reviewers and active drivers. Uh, it's, it, we can't have a single motive force in the working group that's not functional. Okay, I think thank I'm you done. very Thanks. much. Elia has the input. Now, the next step we're gonna do is, for those who've raised your hand who want to work on the ephemeral data store, uh, for the model people, uh, I think Elia and I will get back to you on that. I, I apologize for this uh, pause here, but we will get back to you within a day or so. And if you're here the rest of the week, we'll try to meet with you individually. So we really, we really appreciate your hard work. And Michael, I think you heard that you have new someone to talk to about it. Yeah. Sorry, Leah, just, let me just clarify. Clearly there's interest in both of, both of the models and the work. The question is not, should the work proceed? Um, and I, Sue, of course, understood this. The question is, should it proceed here or would it make more sense for it to happen in RTGWG due to the, uh, you know, if we're trying to close, you know, work on heading to finishing up the work in I2RS, then it might make more sense to do an RTGWG. So this is a management issue, not a reflection on the coolness of the drafts or the and, interest in them. And, and, that, and that you should see as a positive thing for your drafts. There's yes. there's actually good interest in Ali and I are being very careful to make sure Ali and Russ and I are very careful to make sure your drafts are finding a good place because we are hearing interest. So you should hear that as a positive. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. Okay, the next part of this working group is really a working session. So for those people who raised your hand, come up to the front. We're going to sit down and talk about the ephemeral data store. The rest of you are welcome, but this is really this session, and we may schedule another session on Thursday as a working session. So if you raise your hand, come up toward the front. We'll just sit and start working on this ephemeral data store. They didn't know there was a test when they raised their hands. <laughs> <laughs> you get to run so you've got the whiteboard and all yeah yeah okay come on um so i'm going to start with the ephemeral data store if you're interested uh come toward the front if you raise your hand and um we're going to just start to talk about things so people can start writing stuff down this is going to be hard to take notes for you now. that's okay 
That's okay. It doesn't have to take those. That's why you take pictures at the end. <laughs> okay. So you're going to have two functions here where we have ephemeral data store. This basic, by the way, um, Jurgen, just so I say thank you, uh, uh, you're one of the authors. Thank you very much for the care. You did your normal excellent work here along with Kent. Thank you. You just did a fabulous job with this stuff. Okay, folks, in this uh, revised data store, uh, and Ken can help us, this is a basic model. You know, we could take off example ITF ephemeral model and just simply put, wait, first let me take a step back. One of the things that, that again, very helpful, asked me in email is what about ephemeral data store and dynamic data store. I hope it was clear that ephemeral data store is a subset of dynamic data store. Not everything is ephemeral, right? The, the, the ephemeral source. Well, sorry, uh, Kent Watson. I, I, I thought they were synonyms for each other um, that we had just moved from the, to the term dynamic. Uh, so it wasn't specific to the, the question but. some people said and this is part of the discussion part of the uh, model design is there's ephemeral is a particular thing that says when you reboot the information goes away poof goes the magic information it is not clear that in dynamic data stores every that that is a capability that has to happen with dynamic data stores you could store dynamic data store in non-volatile RAM. The, okay, so that's where you laid it out. So ephemeral and, and you made it the same. Well, so the draft says anything that's written to the dynamic data store is ephemeral. It doesn't, doesn't, the draft doesn't preclude you having a data model where you can write entries in the data model through the dynamic data store and those are ephemeral and in theory, you could configure entries in that same data model through conventional data stores okay. and those would be persistent. Let's go with the simple case. We're just gonna say they're cinnamons and stop. I, I had to raise the issue by question. So we're only gonna consider, Jan, thank you for the question. It was excellent in email. It is only ephemeral, okay? So this example that they have, we could say, ITF ephemeral, IHUS ephemeral, whatever the appropriate thing is. Probably it, since it's ITF, it should start. We can go with the namespace. We can give a list. We can import the data store. We can import the origin. Did anyone have any problems with the origin pieces that were listed in the revised data store? By the way, do I have someone who wants to be a lead editor on this draft? Am I getting a volunteer? That's one of the, the things Ali is looking for. Do we have a lead volunteer for the editing? Not seeing a hand, that's a little worrisome, both uh, Ali and I. Um, okay. This ephemeral identity then becomes part of the da data store and the origin can be from the base of the dynamic. Okay, there is an argument value, and Kent, what were you intending for this argument value? I didn't pick this up in NetMod. Uh, okay. um, so we're actually outside of the working group meeting now. I don't, yes. have, to, I don't have to say my name every time. No, you don't. Okay. This is a design team. No, I start, I start. Okay, great. Yeah, it's, it's, this uh, is just. Right, so the um, data store authors were are in the process of discussing the need for this extension statement, and actually we're beginning to think that maybe it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, we're we're um, trying to formulate a final conclusion to it, but the whole question is, do we really want it to have config false ephemeral true, or could we could the data model just be a standard config true, uh, and you know, and but but it's only um, available inside the specific dynamic data store. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's on the previous slide. 
like yeah point uh, I, it was point second to last or second to the top line i think yeah. it was the uh, three, config false if i'm not true yeah so so the um the, okay so at the time that this was written that's what we thought but then in the interim uh we came out the yang library biz mm -hmm. document and if you look at that there's basically a list of modules uh which could include standard configuration modules and also itrs modules if you like and then or or, or Okay, and then there's a list of module sets, and then lastly a list of data stores. The data stores would be things like running, candidate, and then potentially ephemeral, iTRS ephemeral. Mm -hmm. Each of those data stores, then I have a pointer into which module sets they're using, which of course then are which modules they're using. So what this means is you, we, uh, you could have a module and a server could say, I only implement it inside the ephemeral data store. And that and, might be very useful. And, right, and then of course, then that means the config true nodes would you know, it's obvious that these are going to reflect the dynamic um, updates. So this, the, it, it, then in that scenario, you wouldn't have to have this config false ephemeral true, which uh, in some ways seems different. I mean, it would go against the grain of some basic tools like PYANG and your output. Yes, and I, I, like, like, I like that environment. So, so we're, we're still in the process of kind of sift, sifting through whether or not we really want that idiom, config false ephemeral true versus just having config, standard config true, but the module's only available in a specific data store. So. The question is for the RIB info model. Yeah. Oh, for the topology yeah, model. So the, the RIB Yang model today in the draft has it as, as config true, right? Right. Has all your leaves as config true. I'm glad you said that, because I was in the process of reviewing it. I was wondering if it was ready. It, yes. It's config true, okay. and I believe the topology model was config true as well. And, and you intend to be able to edit them dynamically? Yes. Okay, so then that kind of tilts the tilts the hat, if you will. Tilts the tables. So, so I think the remaining question is: Is there any cases you have where you think there's data that's config false, sort of state data, like fib entries, maybe, for example? There, there are in fib entries as defined one or two state values. That is, hi, I installed a route. Oh yes, it really happened. So that's operational. That would be if it was just in a config one. So, so if you install it, if it if if the if, if the RIV model is used in a straight configuration model, that is obvious. Yeah. What you're really asking is if you instantiate this in an ephemeral state. What happens, right? Uh, what I'm, what well, I'm actually consider, considering there are two applications that both want to, that, that are, that one, okay, I have to use like a BGP example or something, where one is reliant on the next hop provided in the routing table. It's actually the next hop route is installed by another process. So the process, the applicant, first application installs the route, the second application needs to know that that route was installed. That's like, you know, typical operating procedure. For right. Control plane protocol. Right now, right now, the uh, grow working group is some, doing something very like it in in what one call. Not with all the net mod stuff because they can't do it. They want to install a route and then they want to be able to read it back to make sure they got there, and it's in their definition that's dynamic. It blows away. So that's an example of a working group doing it in a less than optimum thing because the stuff isn't ready. So um, I think my question is slightly different. It's, it's or well, maybe it's the same, I don't know, but it's if you have some data that you naturally in the Yang model mark as config false, is there any of that data that you, you want to write to? No. So if everything I can't think of a one. If everything you're gonna to write to is something you think is something that could be configured normally, potentially, and is reasonable to mark as config true, then that's useful to know. Every it's, time we've done something like that, we've well, regretted it. I hate to use, the problem is I hate to use the word configure, but yes, it would oh, be installed. Or configurable or something yeah, like that. Yes. It would be state that you would write to rather than just reading. Yeah. Yes. That that I think is clearly eliminated even in all the models. Yes. Okay. Just to, just to clarify a little bit, because I think, Bob, I think you're talking about configurable through standard data stores, whereas you might be talking about writable 
in general. Yes. As in through the dynamics, yes. through the ITRS protocol. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit, no, uh, a little bit clearer. Just an example. There are likely to be things in I2RS models that do not exist in other models, that we're not exposed. But if they're writable, they're writable. We're not going to say they're completely false, but we have to write them anyway. So you're not going to take something that is completely false in some other model and make it completely true here. We at least haven't found any case we need to do that. But there are certainly going to be things that simply don't exist in the regular data store. I think that's okay. I mean, I think, I think having the option of having some coffee true stuff that's only applicable to I2S, I think that's okay. It's more the question of semantically what's configuration and state. It's all a bit woolly anyway, but I think that Yang, coffee true is what people think of as configuration, coffee false and stuff isn't. And it's just trying to get that balance. Is, is this stuff that is really just state you want them to modify dynamically? So something like a, some session state that you'd never be marked as configurable because it's, it's, it's dynamically learned from the the running network, so you can't define this config. It's not something that's So we'll use BGP and we'll use the LSP example. The BGP example where you would write over something, everyone who's done that has usually found a place where it went bump in the night and caused a bad problem. Okay. And then, I mean, there are many things like you that's can good. do that are, that are not configuration that people have tried, and every time I've heard of that, I've usually heard of a uh, a major incident okay. caused by it. It's a bad idea. Let's just stop. I agree. Okay. okay. They have done that, but don't go there. It, it usually goes really badly crashed at some point in life. It's, but it almost feels like this is outside the config true faults. Yes. It's like not, whatever you set it to is, it's ephemeral data. It, it's not, or state. It's, it's not like, I'm not sure how the, even, I don't know how to get my mind around. Well, there are things which we are going to define in our models for reading purposes which we don't expect anybody to set. Yes, that's config false rather than config true. Yep. The fact whether it's really config, forget yeah, 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 the word yeah, yeah. config is that it's, it's read or write data. Okay. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Ish. We like to. In routing, we're very good with ish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have, have we, yeah. Phil, this is a good time to just sit and chat about this. I agree with that. These are configurations that will never connect. <laughs> well, does, does, does I2S intend, like, obviously you intend to write rib entries through the I2S protocol yeah, we intend into to write the dynamic to data store. Yeah. That's fine. And read. Right, Do read. you... Do you and also expect for those models to be accessible through st conventional configuration interfaces as well? That as has never data. been a, a goal. Okay, so that's outside the scope. Okay, fine. Well, there are people who want to, there are some of the models we've worked on where we, people have said explicitly they want to reuse those models in more conventional Sure, interfaces. so that's fine, but that's not your intention. That, I would still that's think. That's not the data, ephemeral data storage intention. Yes, yeah, so the question is, is slightly the other way around is, if you have those models, are you stating explicitly they should not be done via conventional configuration? Are they specifically they should only be used dynamically? Because that's slightly different. Because the moment config tree is looking like it might mean it can be done conventionally. I not it has to be. Not that to say that, I would say anything you can look at anything with dynamic mean, any model can be looked at and said, does it apply? Is it the right thing to do in some other context? Mm -hmm. We do this all the time. Yep. I don't think it's for us to say, well, no, no, you could never configure this. There are models where it will be obvious that the data it contains on is dynamic data and you would never be able to practically configure mm -hmm. it. That's just fine. But that's not, that's not our that's desire not our, to... Our, we're not worrying about that piece of the problem. If, if we said that in the past, you sent us home with that question and we went and did a lot of discussions and decided, nope, that's not a constraint we have to have to work on. So if you heard me or someone else say that, your questions really got us to dig and say, nope, wherever people use our models, they use our models. And then they got to define their data stores and define what they want. We've got two basic models, ribbon topology. We know that they'll work with ephemeral. We know that if people are careful, they might work with config. That's, that's their thing. 
because they're they're already doing it. I hate to say, it, you know, they're ahead of us. Right. So taking this out of example, writing a route through the grid is not the same thing as configuring a static route. Those are two different things. Even though they may be implemented the same in some implementations or not implemented the same in other implementations, from a routing protocol person's perspective. When someone types IP route blah 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 on some configuration, that is not the same as inserting something in the rib. That's the figure you static route. Inserting something in the rib is something a routing protocol does. That's a different mentally that's a different thing. Um, the, the, the place where it comes down to, to the browser apps is this. Uh, config true has to apply to the entire hierarchy. You can't in the middle of down in the middle of city state put something as config. Right. Your entire yeah. well, if you say config false up the top, it's right. all config false. So, yeah. so, so yeah. if you have a fib or or a traditional grid, which is which is state, mm -hmm. and is uh, it's not right. If you have if you have those those models, you can't you can't down here down at the bottom say here's something I want to I want to fill with. Uh, so I'll make it config true. The models we're building are config true. Yeah. Okay. As, as in terms of the model, the higher levels of the models are true. Right. That, that's that's the only place where uh, where I, I want to be real crisp about. No, we, your your uh, questions about this are being made for something. No, the whole, the whole model would have to be true. The whole model is good. Yeah, no. there may be config false leads. The thing yeah, is, you should check whoever's doing the good stuff. There is operational state at the very bottom that says this no, this well, route. Let me try to give you an example. Um. I have a, a route that I have learned somehow. Let's not even worry about how I learned it. The route has learned, been learned or I've installed it or whatever through Big Truth, through I2RS, or through BGP, or whatever it is. There is a MAC header rewrite that is used to carry the packets for that particular destination over an individual link. 99% of the time, probably 100% of the time, that is going to be a big fault because you're because you're not going to rewrite the MAC header from I2RS. You might rewrite the next hop. You might rewrite the route itself, right? But the primary tree is going to be config true. But there may be some individual leaf here and there that simply it's local state. There's no way for a controller to know what that local state would look like. And there's no reason for the, yeah, there's no reason for the, and if the, and if the controller overwrites it, you're probably not doing a good thing. When you took, this is where I, I said we had to talk about in the, my original draft, the defaults case, because when you read Rescop and some of the defaults, what happens, it, it reads like the same thing. You know, what do you do when you have a route and this route is, got a next hop, IP next hop, but it's installed with a MAC address that goes out. That can't be must with. It's just operational state that it got put in with a, a particular MAC. That, 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 Ethernet, that Ethernet interface has a MAC address. How do you handle that in your normal uh, configuration? We can configure a next hop, but we won't, in many cases, be able to configure a Mac because that's tied to an interface. You can't change it because that interface usually is tied to a Mac. You, you've got a board, you stick it in, it's got a Mac address. No, we, we don't think it's sensible for the basic grip. Yes, yes, that's how we're planning to do it, and that's what Russ is trying to say. Those are the things. The rib itself is config true, but when you get down to these individual leaves, there may be places where you have operational state. This right, that is that is as far as I can tell what you are doing now. So, so one thing that that came up during the uh, I guess the writing working group, and I think I, I sent an email to you on the working list was was the assumption I think. Um, that when we make config true nodes in a model, that does that necessarily mean they're accessible through conventional data stores? So I guess I responded to your statement about that from your slides. And I guess my, my thinking was that just because you have a data model with config true 
doesn't necessarily mean it's accessible through conventional data stores. Coming back to what Kent said, we can say this model is only accessible through this data store, this model is only accessible through this data store. We can have models in a router that are accessible through some data stores and not in others. So the ITRS model may only be accessible through the dynamic data store. So if you try to address that model through a conventional data store, you get error. Right. Like this. So, so this goes back to that decision with the idiom, but assuming that we go with the you know, ITRS models are with standard config true. Um, then if you really wanted it only to be available in a dynamic or ephemeral data store, then the RFC itself could say so in text, or the Yang module might be able to say so in text, or we might be able to define a new Yang statement of some sort that kind of explicitly states it, but I'm not sure if that's a great idea. Well, as I mentioned, that was one of my proposals. That was one of the proposals, proposals yes. But, you know, it's not, with, with the catalog, this becomes a new point. Well, also, do we need to limit it? I mean, I no. rest and say, for the ITR, for this ITRS draft, it has to be accessible through the dynamic data store. Vendors can make it accessible that's other the ways if they want. That's, that data model. That's, yes. what, that's what Joel was saying. Just don't want to restrict it or or imply that it must be uh, supported. Right. So back to that. Um, I mean, I don't. I haven't read the rib draft myself, but in the topology draft, I remember it's not intended to only be. Um, in the dynamic data store, it actually was intended to be configured standard, yes. and because you want your overlays to survive reconfiguration, <laughs> this is why we came up with that whole thing with the leaf ref being required and since false, so that you know it, it, if it's referring to something and it's not the it can't the reference isn't resolved inside configuration, then the system it's it's valid config valid configuration, but then the system can go ahead and see well can I resolve this leaf ref inside operational state, and if so, then the overlay becomes active. Um, Blonde meat echo. Oh, okay. Guys, and the recording, so it's nice to try and use the mics when we can. Sorry, guys, we should, you know, pass this. We should pass this around when we talk. Okay, more questions, more thoughts on this. So I still think that, I think we're on the same page roughly that, that when you write a model, if you write config true in there, that means that it, you could take this model and use it on conventional configuration. It may be the author's intent to say this doesn't make much sense. And you might put a comment in the model to say it's designed to, use, to be used with ITRS. But actually, just by it being config true, that does say that somebody could take this model if they wanted to and try and use it through conventional data stores. So that's true. And, and then maybe, as you say, we use Yang Library as the mechanism to then make, it, make a particular device say whether or not a particular model is available only through dynamic or also through conventional data stores. Right. And we find the case. What we've been hearing from people is, for example, um, AC provided an extended rib to the RTWG. And Louise said to him, why don't you look at the IR2S? He said, but that's ephemeral only. And we said, no, that's a data model. Yes. You install it in the data store you want it to be in. Yeah. If you want it to go in the config, because it's got some really valid things, then you need to make sure it works in the config that in the Yang doctors, you might want to, you, you should look at the model in both ways. So that is the case that Joel mentioned that is some place you say for this data store, we're going to accept this. If someone puts it in the config, they have to make sure they have it working. So the one thing we want to be careful of here is to do with conformance, I think, that to say um, if it's a device that's choosing which data models are available in which data stores, um, then that could be quite difficult for um, clients to handle. The, there needs to be some way of having right. sets of modules and things like that. So it's all to do with the packaging and library things, but there's an open issue, I think, here. That so have. if we have the models that can be either one, Joel, did you have something you wanted to say about this? The thing is, we have only a small, a relatively small number of models, and at the moment, all of them that we're doing, by definition, we're doing them because we want to support them in the ephemeral data yeah. store, and we certainly, while some boxes may choose to support them in the conventional data store, we certainly do not expect that all boxes will. So yeah. from our perspective, in terms of the current work, we have to treat it as, if you're supporting this, it's because you're supporting it here. Now, in principle, you could have a box that only supported it somewhere else, only supported it in the conventional, but we're not trying to solve that. But we would not want to have the situation because we wrote it for ephemeral, 
the boxes who, who are supporting the model were required to support it for config. That would overly limit the work and the use of the work. Yeah. yeah. I know. And that all sounds fine. And that all sounds fine and pragmatic. And I think that's even the is just a description statement or comment in the model saying this is how it's envisaged to be used. I think that's okay. So sufficient. we can put again. That's something as these models are going through the final gang doctors, you should say put it in because um, we're happy to do that. Questions before we go back to the day, the we're just staying on these, and then I'm going to go to the next set of pages of questions. Well, it, it, it's along these lines, I guess. Um, one question I had um, based on the new data stores draft. So we've defined a new uh, edit data RPC. So this, this, the rib model, for example, has RPCs defined yes. for adding and removing things. I don't think the topology draft has that. So if we go to the, the rib model, um, you could use RPCs to add and remove them. But I guess it's a question for the community. Are we also intending to use edit data with a target of OR ephemeral or DS ephemeral to write to those data models or just the RPCs? So that's one thing. We'll well, the topology have. model, I think, is expecting to be able to do edit data. Edit data, because it doesn't have RPCs. Right. But then I wonder why are we doing RPCs then for the RIB model? Okay, and that was based on uh, initial feedback for some of the early implementers. Okay. Pardon? And speed, right? And that's that was the next statement. Is the early implementer said RPCs are going to give us better speed? And I can kind of see that because the implementation can go, oh, this is this RPC directed right. Right. That's right exactly what. Of looking at where it belongs in a data store, but that's something definitely want to clarify is that okay, we're not intending to use the new, the new edit data or edit data is allowed or whatever. Like, so at this point, and again, we're in this last minute call that and mock sitting there, we should say at this point, with this revision, we're intending to do RPCs and mock, you need to okay. work and on that. Okay, what about reading from the data store? Because reading from operational will give you the operational values and for sure we should be able to read this data model in the operational data store. Yes. But are you intending to be able to read the OR ephemeral data store and read to, to read this uh, data? The RPCs are only right. Yeah, they're only right today. So I'm just wondering, do you want, you to, do your a, answer. Do you want to do a get uh, get data on this data store or not? Just something I'll need to clarify. There are you mock the get data? No, no, get get data. So there's get get data. The there's edit data and then there's get data, which would just you get. Have to be able to read the routes, so you well, have to be able to get them from the operator data store. In the current in current version, there have the some. For example, the rib add, rib delete, and add and root delete, so, something like this. So, uh, I lost my way. Okay. Henry, what are you going back and we'll share what? Here, you stand here and we'll share. The question he's asking is are you going to get the results from the operational data store or from the. Actually, let me rephrase a little bit. Yeah. So, Obviously, you'll be able to query this data model from the operational data store, and that'll give you the operational view of everything in that data tree, the config true and the config false nodes. For the config true nodes, are you expecting to be able to do an, a get data from the OR, from the DS ephemeral data store? I'm not, I'm not sure if there's a reason. I'm not, I don't know the protocol well enough to know if what you write to the dynamic data store. I know, but what, what you write to the ephemeral to the ephemeral data store, is there some reason that wouldn't exactly get translated to the operational or the other th other things that could overwrite it or something? Well, I mean there should be no lag between the operational. The the only the only concern I have is the view that you need to be able to get at all of the pieces of data. As long as you can get at all of them, I don't think it causes a problem for us if the reads need to be at aimed at the operational data store instead of the ephemeral store, make the code look, look a little odd to some people, but that's a perfectly reasonable thing. I had normally simply assumed that one would read back from the same data store one wrote to because I tend to think that way, but it doesn't hurt anything if it... Well, I mean... That is what he asked. Kind of. I mean, we're using RPCs to write. Um, it's a question of whether we read, ever read the data store. Because to be honest, you need we to never, be able to read it. If we never read this, the data, if we only read the operational for this data, 
maybe let me back up a little bit. At one point, you guys were talking about panes of glass and resolution. It, it, is that all gone away? There's only one. Uh, there's only a single ephemeral data store. Yeah, it's a global that every. There's client only one the ephemeral one. data store. Last writer wins. Yeah. So then, well, anything. There's a priority mechanism. It's not always last writer wins. Okay. But so last successful writer is the only one who won. Only keep one copy of the data. Yeah. Which means it'll be that same copy very shortly in the operational. Yeah. Then there's probably not a strong need to read from this data store using get data, which actually kind of means to me you have RPCs to write. You're never going to read from it. I'm not sure there's a data store there. Well, the, at least the way the topology is done origin, is just to read and write that data okay. store. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have a strong preference on it. But. Okay. The reason we did this is we're trying to have a very simple beginning. There is still an open issue, depending on working group effort and desire, to come back to the panes of glass. But right now we're just trying to get there. That was our statement. So, I'm not trying to conclude. I'm just raising some. Questions no, no. You're, you're, I'm, I'm, this was this was just simply a clarifying answer, hopefully. Um, but so did that get to the end of your question? Well, it's more. I just we'll have to decide what we want to do there. It doesn't sound like we've necessarily concluded. And it's a good point that I have to think about how this might get extended, and also the topology model doesn't have RPCs, so that one's a bit different. Yes. So. Yeah, okay. Sorry. I thought Jason was going. Did you have any more comments you wanted to make on the model? Okay. So I, I thought where Jason was going with that line of questioning was that, you know, if you're going to do get data on the DS ephemeral data store, then it'd be asymmetric if you weren't also able to do the edit data. I mean, there may be RPCs, but it'd be asymmetric. I don't think you're going to prevent the ability for edit data. It's, it's going to be possible. The RPCs are just an optimization. And, but then I would question if the value of the RPCs, I mean, was, that seems more like an implementation detail that could be optimized you know, away, hopefully enough, maybe not enough. I'm not the expert here with your, your performance requirements. But I mean, it'd be unfortunate if there was a need to define the RPC to get that last microsecond of uh, performance. Okay. Then, Does the RPC data show up? Does does the RPC data show up in the database? Yes. Could do that. That was our assumption, and that was our desire. That's correct. In the ephemeral data store. Which, by the way, is actually uh, seems to be against the common way that we're approaching this. That the RPCs are really only affecting the operational. This is the rib for the department. No, no, no. For in general, for all, in, for NetConf and in RESTConf in general, all RPCs only affect operational. Uh, RPCs can affect unaffected migration. Oh, okay. The constraints are uh, are 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 resolved in the operational. The RPC itself is yes. anything box. Okay, sorry, that's my no, but it is true. It's a little bit funny to have these custom RPCs and these things. Right. I mean, when you're, the thing is, the fact that you're writing to this data store is already going to alert the router that you're doing something special for I2RS. So maybe that's going to be optimized enough already. It only has a certain number of places it has to go in the app layer. I think it goes the opposite. Because, because I'm having to, 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 to do the RPC, I, I try to do yeah. Because I have to do the RPC and then. Because I have to do the RPC and then uh, go ahead and create the thing in the ephemeral database, I'm not really optimizing. You know, I, I actually have to do more work because now I have to tell it as I'm making the operational database, don't let that in fact impact the demons who would traditionally look at the ephemeral database. So it's it's a it's a mixed optimization. But 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 the, my my question, and I thought your question as well, was does does data created by the RPC show up in the ephemeral database? And the answer is, is yes. Okay. So, so, so one thing that you have to be aware of, if you write an RPC and you hardwire it to a specific data store, it's hardwired to a specific data store, right? By, by doing that, you won't be able to use the same module to implement it in, in a conventional data store or whatever, because the RPC is hardwired to modify a specific dynamic data store. Right? So if, if you look at edit data, it passes the data store as part of a parameter into it. And 
So you don't that, have that mechanism. That would argue that we need to have both if well, people are going to do multiple. But again, as Joel said, our focus was ephemeral and the and the high and the high throughput constraints right. for the RIP. The topology is. So if, the we, other if we ever wanted the RPCs to be used in other data stores, I mean, someone could also augment them to add a target, in theory, if we wanted to change it to be able to use another data stores. But if you're if you're doing this stuff through conventional data stores, you're probably not looking for the high speed optimization, anyways. Why why should the RPC be any quicker than an edit data on the um, dynamic data store? Uh, I'll have Mark. Because we haven't, I don't think we've expressed any constraints as to what happens. So yeah, I think just maybe just a preference for some implement implement uh, implementers. Maybe I, it is preferred to use RPC. In other way, you use, use the uh, classical gate and put something like that. Yeah, in theory, you can direct that right to the app yeah. that cares about it. So I, th I think the recommendation would be to not define the RPCs in the base rib model, but to allow those to be defined in another model. You know another RFC actually that you know potentially augments the model. Yeah. And yeah. So so the traditional edit config or sorry edit data and get data would work. Maybe not the highest performance, but for you know it would probably get you off the ground and satisfy most use cases. And then with experience and discover the RPCs are faster. You know we certainly could augment them in later. That, that yeah. can come at this point. I'm sorry. Well, that can come at this point in the end doctor's recommendations. I, I don't, I don't, as long as it's an augmentation that can go back to the original design. Yeah, although deciding deciding on RPCs or not, I'm not sure it's so much a Yang doctor thing. I mean, it's kind of this community has to decide whether, whether there's some reason to have those RPCs. No. You may want to talk together as a group of game doctors on the recommendation. <coughs> we'll take a recommendation like that. As far I have to send it through the working group, but I do not see anything at this point that says if it's just an augmentation that we put together that equals the same thing. I don't see any problem with that as a, as a chair. And, and neither nope. does Russ. I mean, we're glad to send that back to the working group. I think I'm keying off of Jurgen's comment, where if you the RPC would be locked down to a specific data store, presumably, and you know that's unfortunate because people may want to move around to other data stores. So if the base model did not define their RPCs, then the flexibility to move around would be there. But then the other, you know, but then the other model module would be there. But that's optional to implement, and of course, would be targeted specifically to your ephemeral data. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Guys, uh, no, no, Mark is the lead author, so you're you're talking to the, the right place. Yeah. Great. Have it. We should probably take it to the list of the Yes, we'll take it to the list. Yes, but I think I want to make sure that when we take it to the list, the end doctors and the authors agree, and then we'll just go ahead and. The end doctors and doctors. And the doctors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I know I'm almost Dr. Sue. Um, I'm working toward that. Um, these are just a couple other minor things that I don't know where they go in the data store. So if we could just spend a moment. Sorry, maybe before we move to your next topic, I just sure. wanted to sort of, uh, Joel was talking about the priorities and the one one dynamic or one ephemeral data store. Um, I mean, I think the implementation details for how this is going to be done are still in play. And in my mind, or at least uh, the way I was thinking about it, there, there might truly be a data store called DS ephemeral. Yes. But but then there also might be, uh, in addition to that, there might be something like DS ephemeral one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Where you, one, two, those are representing panes of glass. Right. Where, I was going to say that is actually an implementation yeah, detail that, that doesn't really even need to be in the draft, right? Well, all right, don't give me that. No, the ITRS would have to define all this. But, but they, the, the, the ITORS documents say you don't remember it, it doesn't come back. 
if you want to store it somewhere for information, that's fine. The that device can store anything it wants to know. But the important property is that the current property that the application can know about is this is what's there. If my thing gets overwritten, I get an error. And I don't have to worry about whether my thing will reappear by magic at some later point in time. It's gone. So there's no, it, as far as ITORS application to what is in operation. He's asking a different question. Yeah, it's a slightly different question. Said, I think it's, 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 and there's only one day, one pane of glass for that model. Yeah. What the document calls. Yeah, yes, I know. Um, the reason I went to this slide was actually that very question. No, no, Kent, you, you might want to stay there. The, <laughs> you just, the, 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 it's, it's a fairly easy. When I said we had to discuss edit collision, Andy did a fairly good job of describing in the edit collision, because this is what we're doing. We're having edit collisions, right? Andy called it, said on this stuff, calls it edit collisions. The entity tag is used to handle edit configs. The only thing that's different with IR2S's requirements is if you have a collision and you lose, you have to send an event. That's it. I don't know how to express that in a data store, but that's part of the what do we do to design. It is really for RESTConf edit condition. I figured if we could get the RESTConf now. So this entity tag, can be broken up between client ID and priority, or client reference ID. I mean, Andy, did you guys thought carefully about that? So that's why this is here. Um, so does that help at all? That is one of the, the IR2S sticking points that we've long had, but I thought in net risk comp we did it. Oh, sorry, I'm walking up to the whiteboard. Ephemeral, um, sorry, the revised data store draft. And in there, it has an arrow that says dynamic data stores can feed into operational. And and so then, you know, you would might think that there would just be one dynamic data store I2S would define, but I'm proposing as an implement, I'm not, you know, as an implementation detail, you might actually define, let's say uh, you have eight panes of glass, so define nine data stores, eight of them being the specific one for each pane of glass, one of them being your resolution area, right? So, so then you would say, okay, so, you know, however you want to do it, users or priorities, they're actually interacting with these guys. But then behind the scenes, there's logic that does the distillation. And then that gets, is what's being fed into operational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The point I was making is, I don't care if you store it in nine different data stores or 400 different data stores, but if A writes the stuff and gets success, and then B writes the stuff and gets success and there's a collision and A gets told your stuff is gone. When B goes and deletes his stuff, A stuff better not reappear. Don't reinstall it. Now, normally if I see N of those, it looks to me like they're gonna intend to cause reinstallation and that's why I'm reacting. Right. As long as it doesn't reinstall, I don't care what happens. Right, so that could be your implementation logic, how, how you're doing that. So if you discover that collision, then some of your logic could be to remove the, the values from the data source, so it's gone. As and, long as it's yeah. gone, I don't yeah. care how it's implemented. Right. So going back to the other piece over here, that's why we have both the definition of the edit tag and we just have to pick a number of bits. The edit tag is, is, is currently. I, I guess, Joel, just another clarification on that. I, I believe you would also expect that 
even if there's eight or nine data stores, anything when you read from operational has a single origin. Yes. Okay. One point is that this is not actually a, just an implementation detail. You have to say that which is the target data store you want to write. And do you want to say that I write to DS1, DS2, DS3? First. Personally, I would expect to be writing to ds.e, not ds.e1, but... And the only reason I'm proposing that you might be writing to the one, two, or three is because otherwise you'd have to introduce extensions to RESTConf, or, you know, how do you specify the priorities? It would be some extension, but... Uh, it, 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 right, but if you map priorities onto data stores, then you kind of get it for free with the existing protocols, and that's the reason why I'm suggesting. Uh, I'm going to go back to number one. Uh, entity tags can store, have the space inside of them to store a client reference. If you break the entity a tag, just for a minute, break the number of bits in half. Half of it stores a client ID, half of it stores a priority, right? If you just compare on the cup. <laughs> Priority bits, you know, if the client's different, you compare on the priority bits. If the client's the same, you stay, you know, it, if, if the priority bits are the high order, you can do the comparison. That, that was the discussion with Andy in, in the creation of the entity tag, is if you're encoding that, you can encode it in a way that the, the priority. It's actually even better than that. If you put the priority in the high order bits, you just compare the two things. Yes. And the, and the entity tag, the real entity tag just serves as the tiebreaker because he, he observed that if you really just make these unique, then you don't have a collision. You don't have to worry about what if two things have the same prior effective priority. And so we avoid that. And the point is I don't want to require that people be writing to their individual data stores. That that would be really a painful requirement. So that's what uh, yeah, no, I think I understand your proposal. Um, and this might be workable. I think with, within the context of the ephemeral data store, you may be able to redefine the meaning of the entity tag. Yes. But I just want to share with you that uh, it's desirable that the e tag value for, um, say, running, if, if, you only, if your system only supports running and it gets committed to operational, the e tag value for running and operational would hopefully be the same. So a client could very quickly, like with a single comparison of ETAG comparisons, see that actually, you know, my system is completely, the applied is in fact the same as intended. I would expect, at least in most cases, I won't swear there's not a corner case, that this ETAG that was used on the, dis on the dynamic data store would be the one you would see in the operational. The fact that operational doesn't worry about collision res resolution doesn't cause us any problem with saying, but you can't use that e-tag. You can still use that e-tag. Okay. Uh, so, so I actually don't think it'll be the same in operational because the operational data store will undoubtedly also have configuration from you know traditional um, conventional data stores, and therefore the e-tag value will not be the same as what it would be just for the dynamic. Okay. So my point was actually be different. I think in some of the ITS drafts, I've read about how you um, look at the dynamic configuration coming through dynamic, and it compares to the stuff coming through intended and has some sort of priority resolution between those two. Yeah. Is that still intended? Yes. So, so my question is, how's how's that going to be handled? Well, I can't swear how it will be handled, but I know what the last time I was working closely on that question you'd have a configured value, not an ephemeral value, that was the effective priority of the config store. And so you have essentially a priority string that applies to that, and so you then compare the priorities across those two. That's because otherwise you, you get this complete uncertainty about what's going on. So the, the idea is that, yes, that the dynamic data store, when you go to apply something, it checks, was this created by, by, by CLI or similar conventional config with a higher priority than you, the client, have? 
If so, you lose. You don't get to do it. Okay. Because I'm not a Yang person, I cheated. I said, it should look and it doesn't, it can find the, the real data under the covers. Because if it's already existing in the dynamic, then it doesn't have to look at static because <laughs> if the new thing beats the dynamic thing, then by, and the dynamic thing beat config, then transitivity saves my, my lack. But if there's nothing in dynamic, then you have to check that you're actually allowed to override config. If you assign, just to say, if, you, if priority one is low and 200 is high, if you inside dynamic at one to one, this is just one example, one to 100, and config to 101 to 250, config would always overwrite, right? And in which case, only if you had a dynamic case without a config case would it win. If you flip it, right, then, yeah, and those were the two cases the architecture tried to write in generic form. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. Data in the rib that that's. Yeah. But the, well. Yeah. Um, well, all the systems do have that. <laughs> but you can change the next hop for a route that was. Yeah, you can actually. Yep. Yeah. You, 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 you can have a BGP route learn, and then you use ITORS to install a route in the rib that overrides the BGP route. Or you could actually do it the other way around. You want to be able to do it the other way around, which is you want to be able to have the BGP route override unless the BGP route goes away for some reason. Yes, but that example is a rib example where basically I2RS, the, the information comes from the dynamic uh, data store is the equivalent of a protocol, a routing protocol in terms of it has an admin preference and competes in the rib for what gets installed based on the admin preference, not based on any. Right, that's a local admin preference kind of thing. That's that that's a config that's a config option on the router. That's not something that's done like on a per route. Yeah, but is that in your data model somewhere? This is just how ribs work. I mean, yes, it is. No, it is. I don't think there's an admin distance anywhere, and that would have to not be in the rib model. That would have to be in the config model someplace, right? That would be something that you configure on the rib itself. Yeah. Can I, can I just go back to a question from what Sue put up there? So you've, you've used a range in both those cases. Is, is it not the case that for the, for the conventional configuration, there'd just be a single priority value for all of that? Well, That's my expectation. I suppose somebody could have an implementation where they had multiple, but I don't know why they would ever do so. So, so it's a single value, and you know, and that's configured, and you know through the uh, dynamic test what that value is. Presumably, it's a simple check as to when you're writing to it whether you're above or below that value. That's a fine. Okay. Yeah. Going back, I just brought, we had a question before about about where this resolution happens and what data stores you see the various information in. So. I assume, I assume that whatever's written through the I2S protocol, you're going to see if you do a get data on the, on the DS ephemeral, even if in, and this goes back to my question earlier, even though that entry may not make it into operational That's because true. config overrode it or. That's right. Okay. So then going back to that, we definitely need to be able to read yes. the, the DS ephemeral because yes. you may get a different value in there than you read from operational. Yes. So Back to our okay. original thing, scrub the answer, and put that answer in. And which makes Jurgen's comment even more important. And then intended would only would only have what's configured through conventional interfaces before resolution of the priorities. Yes. Yeah. So my question is 
is a, is this where do we define this different split is that in the data store is that in the addition to rest comp this is a very simple answer but i couldn't quite figure out where you'd say and our normal standardized split between these is this or does it need to be flexible for customer sorry uh, my first question would be that where do you carry this uh, priority information in REST conf? This, this particular example comes from REST conf. Yeah. This is the edit config and anchor. How do you know what is the priority of that specific edit config request? Where is that uh, information the carried? Client is mapped to a okay. priority. You have a table. Okay. You have a static. You have a table that is either statically configured or updated through something like Radius because that's secure from some server, but it's it's pre off it's pre set up it's a priori, and so you know client ID to priority. You could simply have client and priority, but in case your client changes the priority in the middle, that would this is my proposal. This is Joel and I have debated whether you just need a client ID or whether you need a priority, but we need to have that discussion, make a decision, and go on. Um, but see, if your client, if you have a client ID and it always has the same priority, then you just keep the client. The question is, if something dynamically comes in and changes it, what do you do about the decision? Joel says, oh, well, the next time someone comes in, you have a different priority. I'm not as happy with that. I like storing it. Well, the only... The, the, I, th I like actually being explicit about the priority and the client ID, even though I think the priority is stable for any given client, because the pri the, that lets us use some nice clean value for client ID yes. that is not necessarily tied to the assigned priority, which changes. If I have a client, it's got the same ID all the time, if, but Radius tells me what priority it has, and the server checks, is he using this priority he's allowed to use? If he does something with a priority he's not allowed to use, no. Now, whether we allow a range or the value he's allowed to use is always one value, different debate. But my point is, back to the data store definition, this is the entity tag. We're just, the, the cleanest way seemed to be split the entity tag into two fields and say, prior to this, it's going to have these two fields. One's priority, one's client. They're number integer fields or something, where would you put that if we had, it, first of all, does that sound reasonable? And second of all, where would we define it? Is it in RESTConf? Is it in the data store? So I'm not entirely sure if it is reasonable. If you look to the HTTP RFC and the definition of e-tag and what it means, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the representation of the state regardless of how the state was written, uh, how it came to be, you know. And so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. And this is every time you enter to tag, you write it. When I talked to Andy about it, he said, yeah, that's reasonable split in half. Yeah. Be it's, it's just a number. It's an opaque value. If we then go beyond that opaque value and say, by the way, your opaque value has two sub-opaque values in it, right. No, 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 what I'm trying to say though is, okay, so let's say there's an e-tag value. Um, the, the, da the data's been written by one client um, and, and an e-tag value is calculated using your ap approach. Um, and then let's say another, the system reboots, so it's all, it's wiped clean. An another client comes in, a different priority, and they write the exact same data. In, in, in your approach, that'd be a different e-tag, but I'm thinking that it's actually the same state it's the same data, therefore okay, I would think that maybe it would be the same e-tag. So that's, that's the thing this, I'm worried about. I'm sorry. If we defined if they have the same client ID and they have the example. That's not what he's asking. He says if two different clients, client A wrote it at time one, it's got an e-tag. Client A went away, he died. Client B came back and tried to write it. The exact same data. In fact, either client B has a higher priority or he has a lower priority. If he has a lower priority, even though he's not changing any of the data, he'll actually get an error. If he has a higher priority, he is replacing it with the same content, 
but it gets his e-tag because that's now actually conceptually the data has changed. It now has this priority associated with it. So I think it's reasonable to view it as it's not actually the same data, even if all of the fields look the same. So I think it's a reasonable edge. Yes, it's bending the e-tags, but I think it's a reasonable stretch. I grant you it's a stretch. It is a stretch, but... So are we talking about HTTP e-tags? Yeah. I think they're handed out by the server and they're opaque and you shouldn't change and mess around with that. Uh, you shouldn't overload us. Well, but we're telling the server what to hand out. This is the server that we're telling is going to use this e-tag. HTTP uh, just yeah. says it's a little bit strange. Without any definition, it just says as long as the value is the same, you should do it the same thing. The point, Jürgen, is we're talking about what the server is going to use as the e-tag that he's associating with the data. So that there, it's a way, all it is is a hack, and frankly, if you can give us another hack, we don't care, we know it's a hack, to, so that we can associate well, the priority and the client ID with the data. So, I mean, my understanding of the architecture is you have a client coming in, the client is mapped to a priority, Mm -hmm. Right, and a priority is used once you you merge conventional config, ephemeral config together. It's also you used between priority. ephemerals. It's not just with the merger. Between ephemeral clients, so you have to associate the priority with the data in the ephemeral data store somehow. And we said we want to associate the client ID with the data in the ephemeral store for traceability. So. The, the suggestion that we were given was to use the e-tag. If you want to give us a different suggestion, I don't think anybody no, is hung up. We just, want to we just need a way to associate this with the data. Yeah. So the metadata, we started with that. What, what, we, we really just want, that's why this issue is here. We just want an example of how you'd like this to do it and where to put it, you know, whether it's in a REST comp or whether it's in a, Data store definition. So, um, to answer some of the questions, I don't think you should go in the data stores architecture draft because I think this is specific to ITRS and not dynamic data stores in general. Uh, I don't know about the protocol updates, it's a different question. The one thing on the e tag that I'm still confused about is that. I th if the e tag's meant to be a sort of effectively almost like a hash of what the current data is, then I think you might not have enough information in the e tag you're generating here. Because has it not got to represent a hash of, or for a given subtree of everything that's below it? Whereas, isn't this e tag going to represent the last thing that was written to that yeah. subtree? So I think you might have to split it up maybe into, if you do this, the scheme, of having some priority, some client, and some hash of the subtree, maybe? My understanding is that in RESTCOM, the e-tag changes when the content of the whole data store changes. Okay. Right? It's good. not a specific entry in some rip that got changed by client X, Y, Z. So you, this. yeah, and then there you get into well, trouble, I think. Um, you really have additional metadata, and no, you okay. probably need to be explicit about it. You also need to be explicit about when the mapping happens and what happens if things change. So is client to priority mapping something that is static at the You're point it's if, written? If no. e-tags won't work, then we need something else. We're glad to change. Yeah. We really don't care. But I, I'm incredibly grateful because if, if, if we have to change and it has to be in the data model or something, then now's it. You know, we should, we should do so. It, it, if it goes in a metadata model, I hope it's better. But so one at the top is always going to be continuously changing. Yes. Every, like, any every configuration update. Yeah. So I, I think this multi-headed control is the only thing that's preventing this work. You know, like this is the effort that in you know, how to do the prioritization and how to. This is it, right? This is the only. The, the, uh, the multi-headed uh, and the validation. Those are the two. 
uh, what about the validation? Well, anyway, I'd hold that for a second. But anyway, I'm just saying that this is the hardest part. I mean, if you were to take it on as a working group item and you spun on it for a whole month or three months or whatever, I mean, that is this. This is the whole that, thing. If it weren't for this, it'd be sailing straight through. So, I mean, you're asking us sort of on the spot to come up with a different answer. No, we're, but we're just. We went on. Yeah. We're told this one before. You guys are saying actually we see problems, which is good feedback. Excellent. I'm saying check into it. I, 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 I would I would say you know let's verify with the HP RFC the definition of e tag and what does it really mean? Is there you know does it have a wiggle room in it? Just to make sure we're not violating it in any way. Yeah. And and if we're not, then I think you would be okay to continue. Um, it might be difficult from implementation's perspective, right? Because a generic RESTCOF server, you know, you could imagine the infrastructure and its ETAG calculation mechanism. I guess it would have to be able to do the same for the dynamic data stores, but then kind of prefix it with, you know, so it does the same hashing calculation, and then it, and then it does a prefix with, you know, client and priority or something like this. But I, it would just be a little but, bit different from an infrastructure perspective. But Jurgen's point is made. We. We we this tag goes on a isn't then rewriting the whole data store. It's just the one thing that's being rewritten. So, so with an e tag, it bubbles up to the root of the tree. So you modify an e tag somewhere low down the tree, some some leaf. It'll modify that e tag and everything up to the root well, of the tree actually, every time. That's actually not a. That's actually probably a positive. Okay. Because imagine somebody wrote some leaf at certain priority. Yeah. And somebody went and tried to do rewrite the entire data store. Yeah, and then you could You would actually like the fact that, oh, you're going to see the same priority from the last guy who won. Uh, now there's a little weirdness. We may not see the highest priority. It's not going to produce the right result in any case. I don't I think we don't care how it ripples up. That's because it's not going to ripple up right no matter what we do. Rippling up, you're going to have to check all the subfields. Uh, Set it, but let me restate it to make sure I understand. Say so you have a container with two leaves, and client A writes leaf A with priority one, per client B writes leaf you know B with priority two. Yeah. What does the container's priority be? We when don't, I, we I, don't I, well, the way we've defined that. things, it's it, the collision is on the individual fields. No, no, so no, you no. have to check the individual no, fields question, you're writing. My, no, my question is I, I know how to calculate the e tag, assuming we're to go this approach. I know how to calculate the e tag for leaf A, I know how to calculate the e tag for leaf B. But then, how do I bubble it up to the container? That's you no. Know, I think the answer is to, to yes. This has to get answered. But I think that is not going to break whether this works for this or not. Because if it ripples up, it ripples up. So there is a value that is well defined, so you know what you're getting. But that's not the value that's used for the comparison to check for things. It will no, It will almost never tell somebody the right thing that they want to know about. Is this whole data store still the same? But we would even have a question. Did you want to? I'm sorry, keep on. Did you want to? No, I just yeah, tried yeah. to. He's fine. Okay, keep going. Just being uh, polite. I'm just going gonna, gonna to diverge and think. I was just thinking back to you saying where to do. Where does this get written to? Whatever the answer is, I'll say not the data source draft because it's dynamic. Actually, I've gone to the conclusion I think probably not the rest conf updates for NMDA because we want that to progress quickly because we yeah, want yep. to get that. So I think it's another. Another draft that's augmenting RESCOF, probably whatever the solution, well, maybe what the solution is. Whether that's in ITRS or in NetConf is, I don't know. It's definitely an ITRS working group. That, that's, that, that's the discussion that a, a, a draft should be adopted. This is all about but, ITRS right. coming through. The question is is it, is it a data store? What you're telling me, it's really a RESCOF draft, like I started out writing. This, you know, you're talking about that this has to be an augmentation. I'm sorry, I should do that. Is this, are you, what I hear it? Okay, okay, we don't have to do that. Okay, I don't know how to turn it off, but it's there. Um, so, were there any more slides you wanted to show? No, no, I mean, there's, 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 I can talk the rest, there's validation, and there's, we have input pulling something from someone else, how do we validate, and there's this issue, and that's basically the two issues we've always sort of stuck on. So, so again, going back to a strong, if it's a mistake, yes. Well, it's
it's rest, rest of it's time. a thing, but it could be in their graph that's updating the rest of Yes, but it's in the graph that updates the rest of Right. Oh, so true. Mm -hmm. So where that, what you were saying, that is it not something? I have to ask the question, is this a more generic solution, or is this a more generic solution? So, I don't know if there's any attention to the network. At this point, we're solving it for us. The charter said we had to solve it for both. That is, again, up to, up to how we do it. But I figure once we get one going, we'll learn something. Because all of this is pretty. And we'll come back and do that challenge. If we have to wrap, then we have to wrap. I, I don't know how to take, I don't know how to direct more than just a little bit of time. I think that when you're defining your data store, you could put the other side. Propagation rules actually involve how you create the entire knowledge with yourself, and then it's better both for that. Can I put it in the rest of the world? That comes as the notion of the other. If you want to store the priorities in the index, then you can do them in the store, that means for the natural. So that comes as the other text, unless you create better data. I looked up the rest comes back and since they have a data store that back to configuration piece so was track and the local data store key tags so they actually have a lot of um, the problem is that you guys are going to fight by an RPC, which means you don't really have a voting on any resource. You have an RPC that's, as a side effect, creating or deleting resources. And so that the attack is by side effect go somewhere, or else by side effect go something. If you would do added data, that problem wouldn't exist because it would actually go and modify the resource. Um, so there are a number of trade-offs to, to consider, right? So, and it's important that you understand that we do that, that has implications on a number of other things that we can do. And so we have to find ways to untangle that and then find out probably what looks like a good optimization in isolation right or all. Not so that's from all your comments you've made over the time, that was my understanding. Let me go up. We haven't even touched on is it working for me to try to find you to hold the next item session? No, no, no. Oh, first day, is it willing to be a peaceful discussion? I think you kind of talked about it. Oh, maybe just one quick talk about the session. Yes. Yeah. I think I understand the front and front. Yeah. Yeah. Ask your name, Doctor. Otherwise, I'll let go. Or I'll find another one. But thank you very much for the appointment. Um, so, those are the two things we worked on this prior to the day. Multi headed and validated. So, you also, if you have to say, I'm going to do it wrong. It's a bit of a sort of aspect. But I'm not. I'm not interested in trying to. Yeah, I'm not the same boat. And I, and I was going to make a comment that you know the active people uh, were the you know three plus Elia left, but you know one you got Isser, I mean the obvious I don't know editors or if anyone were to be that no one else in this room was talking. Right. Yeah, and and, and, you know, thing I all of us were basically in MBA authors plus Jason Stern. And I don't know if he's interested. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that we started all this challenge with is. You know, we, if we're going to go forward, I've got to get an office. But I'll call for the authors and I'll so, name the two points because we really have to name mm -hmm. this entity, which is a rest contract, and the validation, which I think is a data store issue or not. I mean, that's the thing that, that's the thing we have to solve. If you pull something in from, if you pull something in from, can you think, what the what validation do you think? How do you, how does this data store validate? I think it's probably it's up to you. Yes, that's the point. Someone has to sit and say, this is the way it's going to do it. Yeah, I know. I think it's not pretty So Is that fit, if, just so I understand, is that fit in the data, in the data store definition oh, or is that in a separate graph when I was about the validation? I didn't see your definition of your data wise or us. That's correct. So, in the sort of text above the data store, I describe how it works. 
Yeah. Right. So, so in that boilerplate section, it says that the diagnosis or that the RFC needs to specify all the semantics and syntax and behaviors of the new data store, including turning on and off, you know, protocol specific stuff. Like if you're using NetMount and lock some sense, you say, okay, we're using NetMount and lock some sense. You can turn off stuff and add stuff. You can do whatever you want. So, okay, but we don't really need the end syntax. We just sort of specify it. Yeah, you the text to describe it. I think the one I'm looking at is the dates of the time is I'm not looking at the 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 no, that's what I want to hear is this is ITRS and Pebble. This is ITRS and Pebble, which is why. It is fine. And if you keep a Pebble and dynamic data store to put what works, because no one else will be. Joe, yeah, exactly. That's why. Well, the case in point, Jeff Burton has done it. Yeah. And they have their own behaviors and stuff. So, yeah, so we got a good time. I'll just check in the state. No, we're not trying to be on a very yes. 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 I think that's not what I need. I just got to get a way to Okay. Thank you both. I oh. you the the <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. All right. But I said, I'm going to the Asia. 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 I'm going to the